Hey guys, what's up? It's me, the Gaming Spinosaurus, here with another video. Today is something new and different and weird and wonderful, uh, but it's something I've wanted to do for a while. We are doing a God of War theory, specifically God of War Ragnarok. Uh, yeah, this, this has been a project uh, that's been in the works for a little while, so let's just get right into it. Fenrir is a key part of Norse mythology. He is a very key part of Ragnarok. His escape is one of the many omens that Ragnarok has begun, and he is the one to finally kill Odin during Ragnarok. So you'd think it would be impossible to write him out of Norse mythology, right? Well, that's what I thought. Until I had a think about it. So, we haven't seen very much of Tyr in God of War, in the God of War franchise, I swear this is relevant, but one thing is very clear, he still has both of his hands. This sounds like something very inconsequential, but it has very huge implications. Tyr, in Norse mythology, loses his hand to Fenrir, while the Aesir gods are tying up Fenrir. So if Tyr doesn't lose his hand to Fenrir, then how does Fenrir get tied up? You could say Santa Monica decided to change it, change that Tyr lost his hand, but it seems like such a trivial change, especially since they normally do stick to morphology unless they have a really cool idea they want to explore. So my theory is Fenrir does not exist in the God of War universe and his role will be taken up by someone else. So I spent an undisclosed amount of time doing a lot of research and scouring through God of War trying to find out if the name Fenrir is ever spoken, which it is not. However, there are two instances where he is alluded to. One is during the story of Skull and Hattie, where Mimis says, They were born of the archwolf Horoth Whitnir, a great nemesis of the Aesir gods. And when Mimir is hyping up the Holder brothers, he references the rope that binds Fenrir. Don't count the dwarves out, lad. They're right pricks, but they're resourceful. They once made an unbreakable chain out of little more than a cat's footstep and bird spit. According to my research, these are the only two allusions to Fenrir. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking. This disproves your theory. Fenrir must exist then. He's referenced to twice. Not necessarily. Now, the second reference is easy enough to disprove. Well, yes, in Norse mythology, Fenrir is you tied up using a um, rope made of weird things. It is never directly said that the person being bound was Fenrir. It could simply be someone else, which we will get to later. Now, the second one is a bit more difficult to disprove, but possible. Firstly, the word Archwolf just means lead slash alpha wolf, which could technically be applied to a lot of things. Secondly, great the phrase great nemesis of the gods could literally apply to any number of people in Norse mythology, including the giants, which again, we'll get to later. And thirdly, the name Hrodvidnir. The name Hrodvidnir is the name of Hati's father. This is believed to be Fenrir, but is never explicitly said to be Fenrir in the Eddas. So the Eddas are basically where we get all our information about the Norse mythology from. And I have the uh, the Elder Edda and the Prose Edda. Yeah, they're written in like 1270 AD and they just contain lots of information on the Norse mythology, including stories of the gods and giants and all that kind of stuff. So, technically, Horodvidnir is never explicitly stated to be Fenrir in either of the Eddas, which means it technically could be anyone. So I have been very subtly alluding to the idea that I think someone else has taken Fenrir's place in the God of War universe. This person would have to be the Alpha Wolf or like an alpha wolf of some sort, an enemy of the Aesir, and have the capacity to create wolf children, as well as at some point being bound by the Aesir gods, using an unbreakable chain. And I personally believe that this character is none other than Loki, 
aka Atreus. Now, I specifically believe this is to be an older version of Loki. Now, let me explain why. Firstly, I have to prove that Atreus has these four traits. So firstly, in Norse mythology, Loki is an enemy of the Aesir, and so far Atreus is in the God of War universe, that is, is not only half-giant, who are a race the Aesir are not a big fan of, uh, but he has also had a hand in the death of Boulder and the death of Modi. Magni is still alive, and you can't convince me otherwise. So the Aesir, Aesir probably aren't exactly big fans of Atreus, so you can understand them being it, the great enemy of the Aesir, as they killed a son of, as Atreus had a hand in the death of Boulder, a son of Odin, and Modi, a son of Thor, and is probably one of the last giants in Midgard, or one of the last giants of straight, straight up, if we consider the state of Jotunheim. Next, the capacity to create wolf children. Well, in Norse mythology, Angraboda and Loki not only make a wolf child, Fenrir, but they also make a huge snake child, Jormungandr, and Loki sires the eight-legged horse Sleipnir by another person, specifically a horse who's not who's a name I'm not going to attempt to pronounce at all. There's no way I'm doing that. So I don't think it's a huge leap in logic that Angraboda and Loki, or Loki and someone else, could birth two wolf twins, of course, being Skull and Hati. Additionally, it has been heavily foreshadowed that Atreus's godly abilities will have something to do with wolves. Um, can I turn into an animal? Can you turn into an animal? You sure I can't turn into a wolf? You are welcome to surprise me. So I'm pretty sure the term alpha wolf could very easily apply to him. Now the last point, being bound with an unbreakable chain, is a bit harder to prove, however not impossible. Once again, our good old friend Norse mythology comes in clutch because after Loki kills Boulder and insults a bunch of the Aesir gods, the Aesir turn one of his sons into a wolf who tears out his brother's intestines, which are then used to tie up Loki. But, but that's not it. Then a venomous snake, snake is placed over his head his wife, Sigyan, another of Loki's many wives, sat, sits there uh, with a bowl to catch the venom, but eventually the bowl will fill up, so Sigyan has to empty it. When that happens, the venom pours on Loki's face and causes him to have such violent spasms that the earth shakes, which is how earthquakes happen, fun fact. None of this tectonic plate movements and uh, build up of friction between transform plate boundaries. No, 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 no. Loki screaming with pain. That's how it happens. So I think there is a precedent that Loki could be bound by the Aesir gods. So I think I've laid out some pretty convincing evidence. So let me explain how I think this will fit story-wise. This is a lot more speculative than straight up theory, though some of my ideas do have evidence. So at some point, Atreus will have to go back in time, in my opinion. Firstly, he has to father Jormungandr, who has to be born in the past, as he is sent back in time before his birth. Here. What else did the serpent tell you when you spoke? Kind of sounded important. I'm sure it's nothing. He just said the boy seemed familiar to him. Me? That's impossible. No, oh, I quite agree. Unless, perhaps, he refers to something yet to be. It is said that when Jormungandr and Thor battle at Ragnarok, their clash so violently shakes the Tree of Life that it splinters, casting the serpent backward through time, even before his own birth. And he has to father Sleipnir, who is hinted at a lot in the Jotunheim murals. And when Brock and Sindri talk about the construction of um, Mjolnir, they say the handle should have been longer. I think it was a gadfly fly, or I might be reading too much Greek mythology because for some reason a bunch of gods turn things into gadflies and become gadflies in Greek mythology. It's odd. But yeah, a gadfly screwed up their crafting, which in Norse mythology was Loki. 
So my theory is that Loki and Anne Grabola will be sent back in time at some point in the future of the God of War universe. Probably in some sort of Atreus spin-off game. I don't think this will happen in God of War Ragnarok because I think they'll want to make some Atreus spin-off games. And this theory would kind of stop them from being able to expand on Loki anymore slash Atreus. Then they will like stay together and they'll have Jormungandr, Sleepnir, Skull and Hoti, Narli and Narthi, Loki's uh, human children. They'll factor in later. He'll probably do some mischief as well, which is where the Thor's hammer thing comes in. They will try to live a normal life in the past, but the Aesir will come along, kill Am Angraboda, take Skull and Hoti, like the story says, Odin took Skull and Hoti so he could control Ragnarok, um, and then bind Loki up deep in the earth with a combination of his son's liver slash intestines and an unbreakable chain made by Brock and Sindri. See? It all ties in. But at this point, Loki will be so angry and enraged, he will transform into a large wolf form, and this is how he will stay due to his insatiable rage towards the Aesir for what they've done to him. This is until our Atreus, Kratos and Tyr, who Tyr, who saw Loki's original imprisonment, and this was the catalyst for him to help the giants escape Midgard, realising how ruthless the Aesir really were. See, I'm tying everything together. They will free Loki near the end of the game, which will be one of the omens for Ragnarok to begin. He will tag along during the rest of the game till the final Ragnarok battle that I believe will happen in this game, but that's a topic for another video, where he will kill Odin but die in the process like Fenrir and Odin kill each other in Norse mythology. It'll be nice because Loki gets to kill Odin for killing all of Loki's family, but he also dies in the protest, which is quite sad. And our Atreus will cling to this older version of Loki, screaming in anger, and that's who's in the Jotunheim mural. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. It explains why the figure in, Jotun in the Jotunheim mural resembles Kratos, as Loki is the son of Kratos. Of course an old version of him will resemble Kratos, especially if he's been like in a wolf form for possibly like a hundred or so years. So his hairs, like his beard will grow out, maybe he goes bald. It makes sense. Um, so that's my theory. Is it ironclad? No. There are issues with it and I'll concede there. This isn't like a perfect theory, but I think I think it could work. Do I think it will happen? Probably not. But I think whatever Santa Monica comes up with will probably be brilliant. I trust them wholeheartedly. So yeah, that's been the video. If you liked it, please do smash like. Subscribe for more content. If you do subscribe, be sure to hit the bell icon to be notified whenever I upload. If you want to see more of these, uh, comment down below because this was really fun to make. Um, yeah, uh, I've been the Games Vansaurus. You guys have been awesome. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye now.